Log base three of 81. Get four, um, nine times log base two of two is nine. And log base two of one eight. Ooh, that's negative three. Oh my goodness. Um, natural log of eight, one. Oh. Okay, Bert, you can have that one. That's your point. Here we go. Natural log of one, zero. E raised to natural log of 217. 217. Three. Natural log. Oh, shoot. E <laughs> to the fourth. Okay. Good thing we paused. Um, so that would be three times four, so 12. Get on. Yikes. I am going to be sore after that ping pong game. Whew. Let's finish the warm up here. I've got 9, 10, 11, and 12. For number 9, I got 4. Number 10, I got negative 2. 11, take a really close look at that. I got 48 divided by 3 inside my log base 4. Well, that's 16. And then 4 to the second power, that's 16. Cool. And then the last one, I got log base 6 of 36, which is 2. So for this first one, take care of that power first. Natural log of 15 squared minus the natural log of 75. So natural log of 225 divided by 75. Hmm, 225 divided by 75 is three. Natural log of three is my final answer. Go try the rest of those. So it looks like number two, we get natural log of 175. And then number three, we get natural log of 5x cubed y squared. Okay, let's take this to equations now. So we're gonna solve exponential equations and logarithmic equations today. This first section, we have solving exponential equations using common base. We've already done this. I've got 16 to the 3x equals eight. Well, my first job is to try to make a common base on both sides. So I'm gonna start with the smaller number, eight. Eight, I know I can rewrite with a base of two. So two to the three. So that means I wanna make 16 also look like it has a base of two. So two to the four is 16. And then there was an exponent already there, so I'm gonna pop that three X up in the exponent position as well. Close by multiply, that's just two to the 12 X equals two to the three. And remember how it works? Once we have common base, we can grab the exponents and set them equal to each other. So 12 X equals three, divide by 12 and get x equals 1 fourth as my final answer. Not too bad, because we've done this before. Why don't you go try two and three? Boom, bam, done. Check your answers. This next section says solving equations when common base won't work. Hmm, 15 raised to the 3x equals 285. Well, let's see, 15 squared is 225, so yeah, common base isn't gonna work on that one. I wonder what I could do to get um, the variable out of the exponent position. What's that, Lottie? Oh, I should log it. So, log of 15 raised to the 3x equals log of 285. Remember what you learned way back in Algebra 1. Whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other. So I logged both sides. Then you might be saying, how does this help me? Do you see it yet? Exactly. All I have to do now is use my power property from my logarithm properties and bring that exponent down in front. So 3x times log 15 equals log 285. And now I can just go ahead and solve for x. On the left hand side you have 3x log 15. Let's really think about that. That means 3 times x times log of 15. Log by itself is not a number. You have to have log of something. So I want to solve for x and everything's being multiplied. How do we undo multiplication? Division. So I can do this in one step. I'm allowed to divide the 3 out at the same time as I divide the log 15 out. Once again, whatever you do to the left, do to the right. And there's my final exact answer. Now, it would be nice to practice on the calculator just inputting these. So let's go ahead and plug that in and check your answer. Okay. 
As I look at number two, I'm thinking, hmm, can I use a common base? Well, I don't even know yet because I don't have the exponential part isolated. So always isolate first. So I'm gonna add the three to both sides. Kind of look at this and say five raised to the, well, five cubed is 125, so I don't have a common base. So then what are we going to do? Log it. So X is approximately 1.512. Something that we should consider. Notice that I've been using common log, log base 10. Well, that's because our calculator is programmed for common log but it's also programmed for natural log, log base E. So when solving exponentials, I can use either common log or natural log. Frankly, I could use log base seven, but my calculator doesn't have a log base seven. So I'm gonna choose common or natural. Let's do the next one using natural log. pause here for a moment. We took the natural log of both sides, brought the exponent down, but now look at what I have written. It's really deceptive what I have written because it's not clearly indicating what the exponent was. And we would end up with a wrong answer. So when we have an exponent of 4x minus 1, it would be important to go ahead and hug it out, put some parentheses around it so that we remember that was the exponent. Now I have to do the solving in more than one step. So we will divide out the natural log of six, whew, and we're still not done. This is gonna look really horrible if I end it with divide by four, fraction within a fraction, yuck. So what's another way I can undo multiplication? The inverse property of multiplication, multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides by one fourth. Hug it out. Whoa, that's a whole hot mess, but it's the right answer. Let's look at our next problem. Now this one is base E, the natural base. So on this one, I absolutely wanna use natural log because natural log and E are inverses. So we'll still log both sides, natural log that is, but then let's examine what happens. So I've taken the natural log of both sides. I can bring the exponent down in front using our properties of logarithms. Do you remember what natural log of E is? Well, remember they're inverses, so they undo. Natural log of E is just one. So one times X minus two is X minus two. X minus two equals natural log of 12. Let's add two. Natural log of 12 plus two. Do you see a problem with the way we wrote this answer? Doesn't your brain kinda wanna add the 12 and two? And that's not correct because the actual problem was find natural log of 12 and then add two. So I have two options here. I can make sure to put parentheses around the 12, close it out, hug it off, and that would indicate to find that answer before we add two, or the other safe thing is to pull that two in front, so have two plus natural log of 12. Don't leave it as just natural log of 12 plus two because that is misleading. I want you to try the next two, but before you go, look down here. Isolate E, then use the inverse function. So you better move the two and the four before you take the natural log of both sides. All right, on number five, a couple of things to point out. Notice that as soon as I had the natural log of E raised to the two X that I just wrote two X because that is true, they're inverses. So I plug two X into one of them, get the answer, plug that into the other and two X is spit back out. They undo each other, you get two X back. Then I wanted to have my final answer looking good. So rather than divide by two, because I had that natural log of seven halves, I went ahead and used the inverse property of multiplication. So X is one half natural log seven halves. On number six, that same idea, natural log E to the three X, they undo, you just get three X. And then the final answer is natural log of 10, then divide by three. So make sure that the fraction bar is underneath the entire natural log of 10. If it looks like natural log of 10 thirds, that's wrong. Solving logarithmic equations. Okay, so now we wanna take an equation out of logarithmic form to solve for x. Sorry, Lottie. Looking at this first one, I wanna solve for x. And right now this four x minus three is stuck inside this log. 
Well, to get rid of a log, we convert to exponential form. So this is log base three. So if I wanna to convert to exponential form, I know that three to the power of two is equal to my four X minus three. So let's just convert. Three squared equals four X minus three. Well, is it really that simple? Now I just have like our equation to solve? Nine equals four X minus three? And I add three and divide by four? No way. X equals three. Okay. Let's try it again and see if this keeps happening. Oh, look at number two. I don't have that log by itself. So before I can convert to exponential, I need to isolate. So let's get rid of this one third in front of my log by multiplying by its reciprocal. Okay, now to get rid of a log, I convert to exponential so that I can solve for that X. What's the base on that log? Maybe I shouldn't have kicked Lottie out, huh? It's a common log. It's a common log. Okay, so that means the base is 10. All right, so I'm gonna grab that base. 10 to the third power is gonna equal my three minus two X, okay. Oh my gosh, look, it's that simple again. Now I can just solve my equation. Go for it. So we got number one really fast, x equals three. We got number two really fast, x equals negative 997 divided by two. Oh boy, look at the next one. Yikes, there's two logs. Okay, well, if I wanna solve for x, I gotta convert to exponential, but I have two logs. How can I make two logs one log? Log properties, right? I can use product property, bring these two together and say, oh, that's just log of, well, x minus three, times x, so x times x minus three, okay, equals one. Let's go ahead and distribute that x. This is a common log, so I've got log base 10 again, so 10 to the power of one equals my x squared minus three x. So 10 to the one equals x squared minus three x. Hmm, that's looking like a quadratic. So let's try to factor, set it equal to zero. So after I factor and use zero product property to solve, I get x equals five and x equals negative two. We better check these and make sure everything's looking okay. When I plug five in, I get log of two plus log of five. Well, pr product property, I can get log of 10 and log of 10 is in fact one because 10 to the one power is 10. Yikes, when I plug negative two in, I get log of negative five plus log of negative two. Whoa, whoa, we're not allowed to have negatives inside of our logs. Remember the domain of a log? It's from zero to infinity. So I can't have this log of negative five and this log of negative two, does not exist. So we know that X can't equal negative two. That's an extraneous solution. And number four, see if you can use quotient property to get this into exponential form and then come back in and check with me. So once it's in exponential form, I get 10 to the negative two equals six divided by three X. Okay, well 10 to the negative two is just one divided by 10 squared. So we get one divided by 100 equals six divided by three X. So I'd have to multiply both sides by three X to bring that X to the numerator but then I'm gonna need to get rid of the 100 in the denominator so I could do this all in one step, right? If I have a fraction equals a fraction, I can cross multiply. That gets me quickly to three X equals 600. I can divide the three off and get X equals 200. Looking at five. Remember, you gotta undo the power before you can do the product and bring those logs together. I think you can solve this one. Do you get X equals 125 divided by eight? Awesome. Looking at this last one, it can be a little intimidating because I have logs on both sides, but let's step back for a minute. If we think about this in my little side note, we've got log base four, I'm just gonna say of X, equals log base four of seven. Well, what's X gonna have to be? Seven, right? So if I travel back to number six, I have log base four of X plus three equals log base four of eight X plus 17. So isn't it true that X plus three has to equal eight X plus 17? Yeah, well now I can just solve. Go for it. So I get X equals negative two. So now remember, as long as we have the same base with logs on both sides, we can set the arguments equal to solve. Notice now we have logarithmic equations, but they're natural logs. So of course we wanna use the natural base. E and natural log are inverses, they undo each other. So we want to E it on both sides. But let's be really clear. We don't 
E things as E natural log X minus three quantity squared. No, when we use E, it's E raised to an exponent. So we better clearly see that on both sides of the equation. If I E the left side, I gotta E the right side. Remember, E and natural log are inverses, so they undo each other and we just get the argument back. So that's X minus three quantity squared equals E to the fourth power. Hmm, are you tempted to expand that quadratic? I am, but we don't want to in this case. Let's look a little bit closer. I could square root both sides. When I take the square root of both sides, I get positive negative, two possible answers. And then the square root of e to the fourth, remember power over root, so four over two, is just e squared. So positive negative e squared. And then all I have to do is add three to both sides. It's conventional to put the three in front. So three plus e squared and three minus e squared. Two answers. Okay, on number eight, why don't you just E it? All right, X equals E cubed minus five, the whole difference there divided by three. The last problem, we have to use our product property and bring that natural log together before we can E it. x equals e squared divided by six. So remember, when you have natural log and you're solving an equation, you can always just e it.